Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Well, let's say afternoon for Italy, where I am. Uh, welcome to the fourth uh, appointment with the Linapella Innovation Talks. Um, our initiative is in two frameworks uh, this year. The first one is the framework of the Linapella Innovation Square, of which I'm the curator. As you know, we have been uh, already uh, working on two separate uh, events in Milano and uh, several events uh, internationally, speaking about uh, um, all innovations that are coming in uh, in the, the, the ladder business. The second framework in which we're in uh, is uh, the so-called new point of view. A new point of view is a rethinking of uh, the fair itself, uh, but also it's a rethinking of uh, how to complement the fair events with uh, uh, online conversations uh, and uh, it has been necessary for this uh, unfortunate situation of uh, the COVID-19 but the new point of view is now complementing um, Lina Pelle London and Lina Pelle New York. This is the fourth week of uh, um, a set of uh, a very intense calendar uh, and, the, uh, and the events will, uh, will end up uh, next, uh, next week. Uh, so today uh, we will speak about collaborative robotics. Um, probably it's a topic that uh, um, is not very familiar for some of you, but uh, luckily we have uh, here with us uh, uh, Paolo Vaniglia, who is the field application engineer at KUKA. Uh, KUKA is one of the most important producers of robots worldwide. Um, and Paolo basically helps customers to uh, develop customized and uh, highly innovative solutions to uh, achieve their goals uh, on field. Uh, well, a very brief introduction of myself. My name is Federico Brugnoli. I'm the curator of the uh, um, Innovation Square at Lina Pelle. Um, I think some of you may know me already. For those uh, who don't know me, I'm an environmental scientist uh, um, that has been bothered to uh, other topics such as fashion and uh, innovation and uh, uh, industrial research in general. So the last thing that I have to do is uh, to remind all of you that uh, a new point of view is not just uh, an online event, but is also uh, a physical event which will take place uh, 22nd and 23rd of September in Milano. Um, Lina Pelle has uh, already a lot of uh, uh, companies that, uh, that are adhering uh, to, this, uh, to this event. There will be the concomitant uh, presence of uh, other several spheres. So um, the, the aim is uh, also to invite all of you to take part to this physical event. So without further ado, Paolo, um, I, I, would, uh, I would like uh, uh, the audience to welcome you and I would like you to give us a, a brief introduction of yourself, um, meaning uh, which are your main expertise and what you do uh, from uh, uh, morning to evening in your daily life. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much to all, all the audience, to, to you of course, and it, it, it's not always too e it's so easy to define myself. But a, a, as someone, sometimes I say I'm, I'm an engineer uh, as education, I'm a researcher as for vocation and I'm an innovator for passion. <laughs> These are the three, three things that can uh, connect you to what I am and what I daily do in my, in my life. As you said before, uh, I've been working in, for KUKA Roboter Italia since five years. And every day I deal with all the strangest things that uh, our customer want to do with their robots. Uh, I manage all the innovation products that uh, KUKA delivers uh, uh, into the market, especially collaborative robots, of course. In the past, I made a PhD in biorobotics here in Italy, and then I stayed at university for five years, more or less. And then I decided to move to this big company to make in practice what I studied and what I taught to, to the students in the past. So I think uh, it, it was a good way 
to 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 start with a with a factory why why not in this case yes well well paolo uh, i i always said it uh, to the audience that uh, we have prepared a set of questions but uh, we normally don't prepare the answers so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. apart from the rest uh, it, it is very interesting for me to understand what exactly biorobotics is yeah mm, biorobotics is a field of the robotics uh, which manages with all the robotic solution in the field of rehabilitation, in the field of medicine, in the field of um, robot that can be a surgeon uh, themselves and so on. So all the uh, studies and the researches to put into the biomedical sector the, the robotic concepts. Okay. Um, in the past, I worked with, uh, with uh, four uh, amputee people, amputee people, especially the, the, the arm, people without arm for accident or for some other problems, to give them um, bionic uh, hands or bionic uh, arm to give them back the feeling of grasping something. So. What you have seen here in some films, uh, it's, it's already possible, of course. So actually connecting them with the nerves? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, Directly very... with the interfaces that can take uh, the, the intention of grasping, for example, and they um, transform this intention to a movement of, for example, of the bionic hands, of course. Wow, wow. very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This so, was my research in the past, yeah. Uh, okay, and then, yeah. then the passion goes back to business, right? Yeah, it goes back to the business. <laughs> there is a moment in your life when you, you say, okay, stop studying, stop teaching, Start, stop. Uh, now it's the moment to, to, to become older, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> Uh, so, Paolo, uh, well, uh, a pre-agreed question is uh, for you to yeah. give the audience um, a very broad and general and simple definition of uh, what we call collaborative robotics. Okay. Uh, I, I try you to have explain. One uh, minute. <laughs> yeah, one minute, of course, I can do it. Um, yeah, according to the definition, a collaborative robot is a robot which can collaborate with humans. But what does it mean? Um, so far, we are used to see robots uh, surrounded by fences, surrounded by physical enclosures. Imagine uh, to remove these fences, so to remove the enclosure, uh, to um, make the, the operator closer to the robot and not only outside the disclosure. So the interaction with this kind, with this kind of robot become uh, becomes very, very different from what we are used to see. Because in the past, the, the fences were a uh, protection, a uh, safety protection uh, towards the humans, uh, which has to walk very close to the robot. Uh, and the humans and the operator usually um, in interact with the robot via interfaces such as buttons, such as HMI, human machine interfaces like display and so on. Now, the, the operator is very close to the robot. Um, the operator share, shares his space with the space of the movement of the robot. So it's like as if the robot uh, is a kind of colleague that is like working yeah, with Yeah, you. it can be a colleague that works with, uh, with the operator itself, helping the, the, the operator to do some repetitive action, of course, like all the robots, can lift up, um, things that are too heavy so that the operator can do uh, just the most uh, difficult thing that, that a machine cannot do. Uh, for example, we can, uh, we can uh, react easily to uh, what are the changes why a machine is programmed just to do always the same things, but the machine can do the same things better than a man. So it's a mixture of uh, uh, um, the advantages of uh, having a, a, a very, very intelligent machine mixed to the advantage of our mind. That's uh, the collaborative robot application. It's an application where the, the, the robot and the man give their best to increase the, the application itself. Oh, well, this is, um, um, of course, we cannot uh, um, uh, elaborate all this information in, uh, in half an hour of the time frame yeah. we have. But uh, 
um, I would then go straight away to the to the framework in which we're moving, in which Lina Pelle is moving. Yeah. Basically, we have the Lina Pelle exhibitors who are mainly um, companies that are working with uh, uh, soft materials, uh, yeah. uh, leather in, in particular, but also yeah. synthetics. Basically, yeah. Paolo sheets of materials that have uh, in, in there, I always mind that uh, one of my me one time okay. a piece of leather is okay. taken in hands by humans 54 okay. times okay. okay um and this is one thing most of these times uh, the these uh, these uh, the, these uh, um, uh, moments in which the leather is taken in hands is a low added value application maybe basically yeah. it's like a movement or yeah. loading a machine or unloading a machine but yeah. in some other cases, uh, this uh, uh, is also complemented with the fact that uh, okay. people are looking at the material. And yeah. so that if they find defects, maybe they, then they can detect it uh, e uh, early in the process stage. Um, yeah. The question is, uh, um, uh, one, one part of the, your answer would be obvious. Uh, there would be a, a way of substituting this low added value uh, yeah. movement. And the, the, the answer would be most probably yes. But yes, also, uh, is, is there a possibility in the future to integrate robots with advanced sensors, such as, for example, uh, visual recognition systems, yeah. so that the low added value application can become a high added value application? Yeah. Uh, yes. Mm, for both question, it, it's all possible. Something, something is uh, already possible. Something uh, will be possible in next future because we are managing in Italy with a lot of customers in many fields to give uh, to this robot uh, more uh, feeling like, like they were a human itself. Um, and and it, it can be done with the, 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 the algorithm uh, of the artificial intelligence. For example, uh, we, 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 we can make a lot of improvements if we had in our, in our solution, the solution where the robot is involved, also devices that can calculate what can be next with, uh, with, with, a, prediction, with a prediction. Because um, so far, the, the robot can do what he's pro programmed to do. For example, you, as you mentioned before, if I have to pick up a play, uh, I think, and I have to load and load from a machine that has been done already a work on, on that piece, uh, I, I can do it, of course, with a robot. But it's not necessary a collaborative robot to do that. It depends on, on all the system that surrounds the robot. For example, the robot has not hands, so we have to provide a robot with some that can also feel how much energy they are giving to the piece they are picking up. And in the last years, a lot of deep producers made fantastic products with, uh, with some intelligence inside. So they can, in effect, uh, feel uh, the material that they are grasping like uh, they, they were humans, like, like, like we do with our hands. But the step forward we have to do is to move from what is repetitive to what will be predicted. Because um, till now, uh, the, the, the robot can do always the same movement. But he may imagine if the piece is, is not on the right, but is on the left, the robot cannot react on that. He will go always on the right, always on the right, without any other system that surround, that surround it. But if we give the robot some uh, uh, more intelligence, if we give robot some uh, more intelligent eyes, for example, we provide our solution with some cameras, intelligent cameras, mm -hmm. we vision, can vision, 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 vision system, vision recognition system, that are uh, some, some cameras that become more and more intelligent than, than in the past. And they, with, they learn by doing, isn't that? Yeah, correct? they learn by doing, yes, because uh, um, the robot make a mistakes, but from these mistakes, he understand what he can do after to avoid the, the mistakes. The next time mistake. Yeah, the next time he will not do the same mistake because he learns by the mistakes he does. 
Uh, and this is a very important thing because uh, that all the big companies are asking us to um, replicate their selling to a cloud. So imagine to have a digital twin of uh, your robotized system that is working. One, you, you can see one with your eyes because it's working in front of you, while the other one, the, the, the digital twin of the one that is working is on the cloud. And on the cloud, you can put all the algorithm you want to and analyze, the the and analyze the process ongoing so that you can give with the calculation that the, the digital twin makes all the correction to the process ongoing so that we can avoid all the mistakes and also improve the quality of the process itself. This seems uh, endless in terms of improvement, uh, uh, yeah. Paolo. It's just a matter of uh, having enough uh, um, elaboration power, right? Or... Yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, it's not so easy to, to do it uh, at the moment. Uh, there are a lot of companies uh, uh, not robotic ones. This is more uh, something that is connecting to the to the science, to the to the mm -hmm. computer science uh, field. It's a computa computational. Uh, computational, uh, yeah, engineering. Some computational, computational engineering, engineering is necessary to do it. Uh, and there are a lot of startups, a lot, a lot of uh, um, little companies that are developing their own system to make this goal in this goal in the future. But but the Some short company. Let's say, let's say that the. The, the, the message that we can give to the audience is that robots are, are going not just to be able to do things, but yeah. they are going to be able to do, analyze and improve. And, and react to what is not uh, predicted first. Okay. They can predict a reaction, a reaction that can, can be on the product they are doing or uh, if they are surrounded by operators, they can react to the presence of a crowded environment. And in wow. this, in this, uh, in this <clears throat> environment, the collaborative robot can live forever. Um, well, then we will come to the, to the big question that I, that yeah. I leave uh, for the end of our discussion. Uh, but um, uh, Paolo, one, one of the things is that uh, um, depending upon the, the value of leather or, or depending upon the value of these materials that are destined to different supply chains, the, the surface of the material may be yeah. very delicate. So yeah. is there any, is there any, um, I was going to say, is there any drawback or you, or f uh, for using a robot rather than a human that is able to handle the, the material yeah. in, a, in a soft way and in a proper way? Uh, are there uh, and handling systems which are developed uh, according to this need? Yeah, um, I, I think that uh, the human or the operator can be all can be all, always can always make the difference in in some process. So, um, but he, he also can be helped by by a collaborative robot to make the process better and better. How can we do do that? Uh, Collaborative robots are also called lightweight robots. It means that they, they, um, they, they, they have a weight that is not so high. Mm -hmm. The weight is around 20, 25 kilos. So imagine all the energy that they, that they uh, move when, when they go from one side to another is not so big like a standard robot. And this fact helps the robot to make the operation um, softer than softer. the past. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Also, uh, the collaborative robot can be provided by some grippers, some external grasping system that are made and they are customized for the application. Okay. In many applications, the, the grasping system makes the difference. It, the most important this thing is to uh, design, to draw the the grasping system in accordance with the application. And the uh, robot just move around this grasping system. Uh, uh, perfect. I was visiting a factory that is using uh, um, the robots uh, integrated with specific grasping systems, for example, yeah. for uh, um, high precision uh, glasses that are used for, for lenses, for example. Yeah. 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 So they, they do not uh, interfere with the, yeah. the, the, the surface 
uh, structure of these kind of yeah. hypersticion uh, um, materials. And therefore, yeah. um, th there is a, a also a high opportunity of using it with yeah. soft materials in the fashion business. Yeah. Another possibility for the gripper sis gripping system is to create the handling, the, the, the grasping hand uh, of the gripper itself with soft material. There are a lot of researches in the university, but also some of uh, gripper makers make such a product. Th th these are some um, hands that can adapt to the surface they want to pick up. Okay. So imagine. So they are the, intelligent themselves. Yeah, they are intelligent themselves. They, they feel the, um, the surface and they can yeah. adapt to the dimension of the surface itself. So they can become big if the surface to, to lift up is big or they can be, uh, they, they, they can grasp with a shorter grasping if the surface is little. It's, it's limited in... Uh, yeah, yeah, in, yeah. It's in limited French. in dimension. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, um, very interesting, Paolo, as, as, uh, as I was expecting. Um, next question is uh, a part, uh, one other part of the audience of uh, Lina Pelle is made of uh, those who are producing, for example, bags or shoes or leather goods okay. or whatsoever. So, are, uh, what is the... What is the level of development of uh, collaborative robotics in, uh, for example, the execution of uh, um, some kind of complex uh, 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 works or tasks that require a lot of movement, for example, a kind okay. of finishing or a sewing or a polishing or yeah. whatsoever? Yeah. Uh, okay. The robot is always a robot, as I say. We can... Uh, tell him to help us, but not to make all the things. Because as I always say, uh, humans remain always humans. So if there is a very, very big uh, degree of customization in such a work, it's better that this customization will be done by a human. Uh, why? Uh, collaborative robots can be adapted very easily because uh, the, the, the system, uh, the, the developing system that they have is very general, so um, everyone can write down some code and adapt the code to the application. They can react easily to, to the, um, the system where, in, in which they have to work because they have got sensors all around the bodies that can react if they are pushing too much. Uh, I, I can also put a lot of threshold inside to say, no, I am pushing too much, you have to push less and so on. So with a good grasping system and a good programming of a collaborative robot, I can make a lot of customization. But it depends on what I, I want to, 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 to customize. For example, if I want to sew very precisely a name, for example, on a shoe, uh, Yes, it depends in which part of the shoe I have to walk because if the surface is very flat, it's very easy. Um, if not, I have to put a lot of devices and, and, and the cost overall, the, the, the benefits of, of a collaborative robot because I have to add cameras, I have to add mechanic system that keep um, the, 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 the shoes, for in, this, in this case, or the part itself blocked. Uh, so that the robot can walk. So it, it, it depends on what I have to do. Some customization that are easy ca customization, okay, I, I can give them to the robots. But in other cases, it's better to uh, to keep the robot, uh, to keep the human uh, doing that work. Yes. <laughs> So th yeah. this links, Paolo, with, uh, with our last question. And then uh, just for the audience, um, we will have uh, like uh, um, a Q&A session uh, at the end uh, when Paolo is going to be uh, concluding his last uh, reply to my question. So if you, if you want, you can just start typing some questions and we will have a five to eight minutes Q&A question, uh, Q&A session. So... Uh, my last question, Paolo, is uh, divided in two. Uh, the first one is uh, rather easy. So we're in a COVID-19 moment, uh, in a moment in which uh, the proximity between uh, humans is uh, kind of a problem. So okay. the, the, the question is very simple. Are you receiving requests 
from your customers to integrate collaborative robots to do some tasks so that yeah. the health and safety in the workplace can yeah. be increased. And the last uh, uh, part of this, uh, of this question is maybe the more complex one. Um, what is the degree of replacement of humans by robots? Yeah. And uh, what, what is the next role of humans probably uh, yeah. in, in, uh, in um, uh, robotic intense increasing, increasingly robotic intense manufacturing? Yeah. Uh, during this period of the coronavirus, we, we had a lot of requests from uh, uh, university, from companies, to use uh, our robot or in general to implement some uh, robotized solution for their factories. The most important one is for sanification. Sanification inside the soil to clean, to uh, keep, to, to, to make the environment safer. Uh, it's better to use a machine to, to, to clean inside. Yes. Yeah, rather than human. So imagine we have also a solution with a collaborative robot uh, on another robot that has got wheels. So imagine a collaborative robot that goes around in, inside a, uh, a factory with uh, all the instruments that can sanitize uh, uh, an environment. Yes, this is very common. Also, we had a request for the... Um, people for people who are inside the hospital for example uh, if they want to talk with their parents with their relatives with uh, with all the family we we had some uh, some requests to create um, a robot always with wheels that can move all around the bed when when, when the person in that case uh, is uh, with uh, a phone uh, instead of the gripper so uh, the, the robot can create a connection uh, of a call between uh, the person and, and the people that he's got at home it, it seems to be very strange but it can be also a solution because imagine you can have inside uh, an hospital or inside a factory uh, a collaborative robot with wheels that can move parts from one side to another in that case, we can avoid people crossing each other um, in, in going through uh, many, many rooms and avoid uh, the, 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 the crowded, so, crowded the, environment. The, the, the yes. question may also be, if uh, there was like, uh, let's say, a workplace in which there were two humans, yeah. uh, are you receiving requests to, let's say, have one human and one collaborative robot so that yeah, uh, yeah, we, we, is... Uh, is not yeah. a problem anymore. Yeah, uh, here in Italy, it's not very common to have such a, um, an application. This company, would, company is, would like to realize such an application, but it's not very uh, easy to do that because of the, uh, the, the regulation, um, the safety okay, regulation on, on this safe. fact. Yeah, um, here in Italy, we are very strict. Um, in other countries, um, the regulation can be different so such application is possible but what we want to go uh, as goal is to have the more um, application that can share the work between uh, a robot and a human so maybe in the future i don't know when in 10 years maybe uh, we, we we will have the most of the installation made like that yeah and, but uh, but well, always uh, human can, cannot be substituted, of course. Exactly, this, this uh, yeah. is where, where I was going yeah. to. As I said to you before, human remains human. So for uh, all the tasks where the creativity, the imagination, where the, the, the human mind is necessary cannot be never uh, replaced by, by, by a robot. The robot can make the re repetitive things, all the things that are always the same, and we can remove this task from, from, from an operator, for example. The operator can be uh, who uh, will follow the, um, the working of the robot. He so will be the manager of the robot. Exactly. The robot, so is yeah. The, yeah. Is the next role of uh, yeah. uh, a shop floor operator to yeah. be not only doing things, but also teaching uh, robots to do things? To, to do the things, yes, of course. So he, that he doesn't want to do. 
Yeah, uh, when I explain to, to the customer or to the audience, what, what are the um, artificial intelligence algorithm, uh, I make always this example. Um, if you have a child, a little child, what do you do? How he learns? He learns listening to you because you teach him how he has to behave if he listens. in his life. If my, he son, listens if my son doesn't <laughs> listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they always listen. They always listen. <laughs> and, and it's the same for the robot. The robot can learn if someone can teach him what he has to do. And who will be the teacher? The human. So if we want to make more intelligent the robot, we have to keep you human working very close to the robot because the robot learned from the human itself. Paul, I think it has been very, very exhaustive uh, in, uh, in these 30 minutes precise. So yeah. <laughs> I will just ask the audience, I will leave uh, some uh, few seconds to start the Q&A session. Um, okay. So if there is anybody that has uh, any question, uh, just please uh, click on the Q&A uh, icon and type your, your question. Otherwise, uh, I will start my summer holidays. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Just, in, in the meanwhile, I can also tell you some funny stories about collaborative robot in the meanwhile that we wait for, for questions. Or any any um, Q&A. Yeah, for, for the collaborative robot, as I always say, there is a... Uh, the, the, robotic, uh, the robotics becomes for everyone. Uh, in the past, we have always seen robot all in the automotive system to build up cars and so on. Mm -hmm. With collaborative robot, we can introduce robot in any fields. In fashion too. We had some very, very famous fashion designer in Italy who asked us uh, to make some uh, application to some feasibility studies um, to test the efficiency of their product to make some correction on the process that builds up this product, I cannot do the name because I have. I think not, I know it, even if you yeah, cannot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I can. I, I cannot disclose the name, um, but but in, in the last year we had a, a very increasing interest from a lot of fields that before were never touched by by robots. Yeah, and the collaborative yeah. robot made this step forward. I, I can. I can. Uh... I can also, um, let's say, put on the on the on the field one one other curiosity. So we're speaking about robots with you, uh, in the sense of physical robots. So that they're yeah. basically physical, but the, you know that there are yeah. also robots who are not physical. They basically uh, use information for yeah. Uh, yeah. elaborating them through AI. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, I was in uh, Autodesk, out okay. yes, uh, yeah. last year. And uh, it is very uh, interesting, the fact that uh, they have robots. Um, you know, when you have a pacha on, on, yeah, on okay. uh, tell me you're not a robot. Actually, they yeah. have robots that are analyzing uh, big data um, okay. and identifying trends in fashion, providing suggestions to designers to define the next design for a specific area. Uh, okay. Based on the uh, internet uh, data yeah. uh, that are that are yeah. of that area. In, in fact, uh, in this in this case, we talk about the robotic process automation. This is a, a big field where the software robot can act alone, uh, learning by the operator that types on, on the PC. Excellent. For example, the, also the, the chatbot. If you go to a website. Uh, it's very common to, to, to that a chatbot pops up and ask you if you need help. Can I and so help? On. Yes, of course. Yeah, but there, there is no people uh, be, behind this chatbot. This chatbot is physically a, a robot. It's virtually a robot, not physically. Exactly. Yeah. So we have we have one question. Yeah. Um, we have a computer that can produce creative programs and design shoes and bags. Can you speak to a robot and just have human to make the design brief? So, meaning, uh, will will a robot be uh, uh, good enough to learn what to do, uh, starting from uh, what we call a, a design brief, uh, a, let's say a broad uh, description of uh, what a product can be? 
uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, kind of hopefully, hopefully in the future. Hopefully not. Probably. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully in the future, and, and, and also hopefully not, because <laughs> you humans can all, can always make the difference in this case. Uh, yes, the, the, at the moment it's not possible. Uh, it's not possible because uh, we can predict uh, an action, but we have. Uh, uh, how, how we can predict an action? We, we can predict uh, an action if we have a, a background of, it, of this action. We have learned how it is, and then I, I can predict how it will be. Uh, um, I can teach the robot to some movement, for example. I'm the operator, I move this collaborative robot to, to, to tell him to move here, here, and here, and he re recreate this part all the time. But he cannot create everything from scratch or from just a can, proof of concept. Exactly. So he yeah. can optimize, but not. Uh, yeah, not tied. create from scratch. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, Paolo, in the uh, I, I can't wait for my holidays, so yeah. <laughs> I'm, I have a good one. Really, 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 really a pleasure to have you. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to call you just also in the, in the, in the next uh, sometime just for having your feedbacks. But I yeah. think the audience enjoyed. Um, just as I a reminder so. for all, uh, all the participants, uh, uh, this is just the, the live, um, but Lina Pell is going to broadcast cast uh, our videos and discussions uh, from here until until the February edition of the fair so Paolo very 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 nice to talk to you and uh, I hope you enjoyed as well and, yes of course uh, thank you very much to have invited me I uh, thanks thanks to the audience I hope uh, I have not bored uh, no one uh, <laughs> and if you have questions uh, surely not me can, yeah of <laughs> course thank you very much thank you very much thank you very uh, much thank to all of you thank you very much bye bye Bye-bye.